This is it, the aluminum airstrip, the factor that makes SATs, short airfields for tactical support, a factor allows aircraft like this F-104 fighter to sit down up front where it's needed. With auxiliary equipment, it permits recovery of aircraft equipped with tail hooks. And it launches them. The average SATS airstrip can be picked up and repacked for use elsewhere in a matter of hours, keeping air support a close range operation wherever it's needed. Putting it down again requires less skill than laying kitchen floor tile. It's as close as you can come to instant air base. AM2 mats are produced to close tolerance specifications. Here, a cylindrical billet is fed into the mouth of a 12,000 ton extrusion press at Harvey Aluminum, forced through a special die, and out the other end comes a gleaming one-piece compartmented extrusion already just brief steps from the finished product. Interlocking joints, overlapping and underlapping, are welded on at either end. They make each panel watertight. A series of chemical baths seals the panel against corrosion and prepares the metal for a protective coating of paint. Final treatment is a heavy-duty rough coat to give the panel a non-skid surface. A similar extrusion process produces the solid aluminum catapult guide rail used in the launch system. Only minimal site preparation is required for AM2 mat installations in the field. They can, in fact, be laid over sub-base conditions difficult to even walk through. This diagram shows the mat layout at a typical SATS installation. With main runway, taxi strips, and parking areas. Mats are always laid across the direction of travel. At both ends of the main runway, shallow trenches are dug across the site with a slope of from 15 to 30 degrees. The first and last five rows of mats are laid in these trenches and the bottom four rows buried. These disappearing ramps prevent accidental snagging of tail hooks on the leading edge of the runway. Establishing and maintaining initial alignment is of primary importance. A line should be strung at the right-hand edge of the strip to guide the placement of mats. Mats are shipped and handled in the field in 2,000-pound pallets. They can be assembled and disassembled with standard hand tools. Each pallet contains 11 full-length mats and two half mats. The mats have opposing male and female joints on either side. And on the ends, opposing overlapping and underlapping joints. Correct installation procedure is to move the female side toward the male, the end of the mat dropping over the end joint of the adjoining mat. Half mats used to start every other row provide a strong brick-like pattern, and lock bars inserted in each end joint ensure a virtually indestructible connection. At the end of the first five rows, and at selected intervals thereafter, strips called typical key locks are fitted across the runway. They install in the same manner as the mats, their overlapping end joints secured with Allen screws. Most SATS airstrips today will include a catapult guide rail, shown here in an early trial installation at the Marine Base at Lakehurst, New Jersey. To make landing approaches easier and to free one side of the strip during launchings, the catapult guide rail is ordinarily laid 18 feet off one edge, 54 feet off the other. The rail is supplied in 9 and 10 foot lengths and is always started with a 9 foot length to avoid matching joints with those of the mats. Alignment is of critical importance and must be checked continually during installation. The aft end of each rail section contains built-in dowel pins, which are driven into matching alignment holes in the forward end of the preceding rail section.
before the sections are engaged, a rubber seal is placed at the junction to permit expansion and contraction and to prevent seepage from beneath the joint. Gap gauges provided in the kit maintain proper spacing while the dowel pins are driven and prevent damage to the rubber seal. At least 10 gap gauges should be left in place as the installation proceeds forward. Then all of them removed. Any depressions in the grade beneath the rail should be filled and tamped. Mats are hooked into the left side of the rail facing forward in the conventional manner and secured with lock bars. On the opposite side, mats must be installed in reverse procedure, moving male toward female. The edge of the incoming mat is wedged up with a pry bar, engaged and dropped into place as the pry bar is removed. Care should be taken to keep mat joints on either side of the rail within three inches of each other to avoid a meeting of rail and mat joints further down the strip. Mat joints should never fall closer than three inches to a rail joint. Among accessories included with AM2 mats are starter key locks, which speed up installation by permitting two crews to work in opposite directions from the center of the site. Another is this 90-degree connector used to extend taxi ramps and parking areas off the main strip. The connector is not fastened to the mats. It merely slips into place, thus requiring no tools and speeding installation. This aircraft tie-down kit includes a jig to properly space holes for field installation and the tools necessary to secure the tie-down with Allen screws. Should quick access to any large areas of mats be necessary, a power winch and a tool provided are used to draw out the nearest typical key locks, inserted at intervals along the strip. Individual mats may also be replaced. This mat, representing a damaged panel, shows the diagonal cuts made at both ends with a power saw, and the cut down the center, permitting removal of the mat in sections. A special replacement mat is then dropped in place and secured with Allen screws. Details of its installation are covered by literature provided. Using AM2 mats, a skilled crew can install a complete SATS airstrip in a few days. Lay a supply road to handle heavy rolling loads in a single day build a helicopter pad in one morning. This is it. AM2 mats. Instant airfield for SATS. A good place to start from. <laughs>